good. That's the idea. I, I, you know, I wanted this to be a comfortable, easygoing chat, sort of yeah. old fireside chat sort of thing. Uh, yeah. to help people to, you know, maybe get more comfortable with some of the things that we do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for thinking of me. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing the link for the talk. So, yeah. Welcome to the Therapy Corner. Here at the Therapy Corner, what we try to do is educate, enlighten, and dispel any kind of myths surrounding all things psychological. And so we have several presentations that we do, and this current presentation I'm very, very uh, thrilled to have on is Dr. Michael Regier. Is that correct? Regier, actually, but that's Regier. close. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Michael Regier, he's yeah. a clinical psychologist. He's a certified emotional focused couples therapist and EFT supervisor in San Luis Obispo, California. He's the founding faculty member with the Kauia Delta Hospital Psychiatric yeah. Residency Program in Visalia, California, and a former faculty member at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland. Dr. Regier has over 30 years of experience working with diverse client populations, inpatient, outpatient, addictions, and corporate settings. Since 2010, he has specialized in couples work and has become a leading relationship expert in California. He sees clients in his San Luis Obispo office and throughout California via the internet. Michael and his wife, Paula, are authors of the book, Emotional Connection, the story and science of preventing conflict and creating lifetime love. They have developed an online learning course based on the science of attachment and healthy relationships. Michael, glad to have you on board. Good to be here. Okay, so what we're gonna be talking about, I understand, is we're gonna be talking a lot about couples therapy and how EFT can be a really positive way of working with couples. Yep. So how did you get into this business? You know, I had to get into it actually through my own pain and suffering. Mm. I, I trained um, originally in individual therapy and worked in hospital settings and worked in addiction treatment and research and then went into private practice and then ended up after 25 years going through a marriage failure and saying, gosh, I need to go back to the drawing board and figure this out. And... Um, I basically decided to retrain specifically in couples therapy. And that's where I discovered emotionally focused therapy at a seminar with Sue Johnson, the founder of the model. And it just totally opened my eyes to not only um, the mistakes I had made in my, my marriage, but in kind of the the very core genetics of what makes relationships work. And I just got very excited about the science of this and dove into it. And for the last 10 years, I've been exclusively focused on couples therapy. Okay. How, how do you, I'm curious only because a lot of us right now are doing telehealth. As a matter of fact, I'd say the majority of us are doing telehealth. Yeah. And you apparently were doing it sometime before the coronavirus stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you manage telehealth and couples therapy? You know, it, it actually works pretty well. Uh, as long as both people have a decent internet connection or sitting side by side so I can see them and hear them clearly. Um, but much of EFT is based on um, the cues I see in the clients, what, what's happening with them emotionally, voice tone, facial expression. Um, so as long as I can really see what's happening and hear what's happening clearly, the work tends to proceed really well. And in fact, um, in telehealth, you get a up-close picture of people's faces, and people don't often think about that. So you, you really get to zoom in pretty closely um, to what's happening with, with people emotionally. And it, it seems to work pretty well. Yeah, I, I must admit that's been my own personal experience. Uh, I was always a in my office kind of guy, but uh, yeah. now uh, I've found not only exactly what you said, the face-to-face -face thing, but uh, 
also I found that it's more convenient for them many times. Yeah. So that they don't have to struggle with the getting to the office, finding the time. No, and especially with couples, you're always managing two schedules, right? So, and often babysitting. So if they can see you from their own home, it's often a lot more convenient. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about um, EFT and, uh, well, tell me what is EFT and then we'll take it from there. Well, emotionally focused therapy is is EFT and it was... um, developed by two people, Sue Johnson and Les Goldberg, um, really back in the 70s. Um, Sue did some of the initial research, process research on on couples and what are the dynamics that create these negative cycle arguments we see so often in couples' relationships. So she did thousands of hours of videotaping and coding these sessions to, to try to see why they get so ramped up. Um, it occurred to her that in this couple dynamic, what you often see is a level of escalation that you rarely see in other relationships. And she began asking herself, like, what, what accounts for this level of distress and this level of emotion um, that happens within uh, the couple relationship? And a light went on in her head that, wow, I think this probably has to do with basic human attachment and survival defenses that come up within the conflict. And so she went to the work of people like John Bowlby, the the founder of attachment theory, and and Mary Ainsworth, Um, who developed a whole theory of how we attach as human beings and how we bond. And she began to relate attachment theory to this process research um, relating to how couples trigger each other, how they connect, how they disconnect um, in conversations, and came up with this model of what she calls emotionally focused therapy. And the title really describes the therapy. The therapy focuses on emotion. And what she discovered was that it's emotional communication that forms attachment bonds. So she related it back to developmental psychology and the communication between infant and mother, which is emotional communication. And when there's good signal response between um, infant and mother, the infant becomes secure. Where there's a lack of signal response, the infant will either become avoidant and internalize emotion or anxious and have a hard time being consoled. And so then there's been further research that's taken that into adult relationships and now Thousands of studies have looked at attachment styles within adults and have related childhood attachment styles and adult attachment styles. And basically what the research suggests is that insecure attachment in adult, in adult relationships um, creates this dynamic of, of miscues in, in, in communication between couples. And so Basically, when, when I'm expressing my hurt to you, what I want to know is that you can feel and empathize with my hurt. And so that's what we're looking for in the, the back and forth in emotional, emotionally focused therapy. What's the emotional exchange? Is there an empathic response to a signal of pain? And where there isn't, there's going to be a protest. Now, a lot of therapists get caught up in the content of those protests. We don't think content's frankly all that important because we think that underneath of that content usually is a relationship where people aren't really feeling with each other and that creates insecurity. And then they go on and on arguing about anything from the burnt toast to whatever um, that, that often doesn't have that much meaning. No, no, it's 
I hear what you're saying. Uh, what, what struck me as you were talking was something that I run into um, quite frequently, actually, is the husband who's been ra raised in the male traditional role of stuff it, big boys don't cry, you yeah. know, just dust yourself off and move on. And then they get married and wives are wanting an emotional connection and yeah. they have, they don't have seemingly have the ability to connect with the emotion. Yeah. What usually yeah. comes out is just anger. Yeah, that's really true. I mean, men don't get socialized to be emotionally expressive. And some of the research suggests that in just about every relationship, one person pursues um, with emotion and the other withdraws from emotion. And it's usually about 80% um, of the time men withdraw from emotion. Sometimes it's women, but about 80% of the time men withdraw. So we get this pursue withdraw dynamic and, and unfortunately men don't get it. So often men feel like they're doing the relationship a service by withdrawing. They think that if they bring their emotion to the relationship on top of their wife's escalated emotion, it's just going to blow the whole thing up. Actually, the opposite is true. When the, when the man shuts down and doesn't respond to the wife's emotional cry, she feels more abandoned. And guess what? She ups the amplitude of the emotion. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get these escalating emotional conflicts. The guy withdraws more and more. She escalates more and more until they blow up and they go in separate corners and come back and do it again at some later date. So, so with EFT, how do you deal with that? Um, I know I struggle with men. I get, as an existentialist, I get pretty confrontive and direct with them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, how would you, using an EFT model, how would you deal with that where the man is, you know, in the Gottman wordage, stonewalling? Yeah, that's right. So I came up with a little saying that, that kind of resonates with EFT theory, and that is that, it takes an emotion to heal an emotion. Mm, I like that. So, so what we have to teach men how to do is to feel their emotions, which is sometimes hard for them, to feel their vulnerable emotions underneath of the anger, because it's often easy for men to get angry, which they display either overtly or through passive aggressive kinds of defenses. But underneath of that is a lot of hurt, it's a lot of sadness, it's a lot of fear. And so we have to help men drop down into those what we call primary emotions and feel those primary emotions and speak from those emotions. And when men are able to do that, wives actually feel their authenticity and they de-escalate. Their, their emotion comes down because they feel like the man's being real with them. Makes perfect sense to me. So Michael, uh, talking about men and their issues with their feelings, also what about you know trauma, which will oftentimes, you mentioned earlier, triggers. So here again is a situation where either partner may have had a traumatic childhood, past, whatever, that triggers them in some way. Again, how would you deal with that in EFT? Yeah. So trauma is really a pretty common part of couple relationships um, where there's problems. Um, the, the trauma can be what we call developmental trauma. It can be from growing up in a home that's chaotic, where there's a lot of anger and emotional abuse, or obviously physical or sexual abuse. These kinds of injuries we call attachment injuries because they, they relate to the way we attach to our parents and then learn to mistrust relationship. Those issues get brought into the adult relationship and then um, people can be triggered by each other. The other kind of trauma in, that happens in the adult life is what we call betrayal trauma and that's when Somebody goes outside the marriage with a sexual affair and really betrays the trust of the marriage. Um, either kind, developmental trauma or trauma that relates to adult betrayal, um, significantly 
impact the quality of the relationship and the trust in the relationship. So first of all, what we do is we try to make that trauma explicit. We try to define that trauma. We try to help the non-traumatized partner understand um, this, the other, the partner's, the partner's hurt, the partner's mistrust. And then we try to get the non-traumatized partner to collaborate in the healing of the traumatized partner. And we do that by, by identifying the triggers. So I had one case in which um, somebody had been betrayed by a sexual affair and um, he had, um, she had discovered this over the internet, over Facebook, and just completely melted down. And th this kind of discovery, when you think you're secure in a marriage and then you find out your partner is with somebody else is so impactful that we get full blown um, post traumatic stress symptoms. People are hyper vigilant, they get hot and cold flashes, they get tingling in their sensations, they get um, heart palpitations. Sometimes they feel things are kind of surreal and they, they dissociate. Um, so it's a, it's a severe body reaction that happens when they get triggered. Well, what triggers it? Well, anything that reminds them of the traumatic situation. So in this case, um, this was a couple I worked with in Central California, and they had to drive um, by Hanford, which is a town on the way to the coast, to their, their, their house at the beach. And when they would just drive by that town, where, by the way, he had had an affair, she would get triggered and have a PTSD reaction. So this sounds kind of like this is a lot of work. This is, and it is, it's a lot of hard work. But what he did was understand, have compassion that this is too much to drive by this town. So he took the long road to the coast. He went through Bakersfield and clear around. It took an extra hour to get to the coast while reassuring her that he was there for her that he was so sorry about the betrayal. And in time, she began to trust him and her trauma triggers decreased and they were able to take the short route to the ghost. So, um, but that's just one example of um, how trauma reactions um, can just really disrupt lives and how you really have to respect them, honor them, and um, for the person that hurt the other person to now become the healer by saying, look, I'm with you and I'm going to help you not get triggered. Okay. So thank you for that, uh, sharing that, that little instance of, of uh, a real life situation. Um, you, I'm, I'm going to try and tie a couple of things together here. Okay. Um, earlier on, uh, you were talking about emotional volatility. I'm using volatility as the word where things sort of escalate and get out of hand. Yeah. The, the emotions feed the emotions and then it goes out of hand. Yeah. And you were talking this time in terms of where he obviously was very sensitive and was willing to take the time and be understanding in, in, in a non, I'm going to say non-traumatic uh, couple's case. Yeah. How, how do you deal with the emotions and the de-escalation so the burnt toast doesn't become about the burnt toast? That's a great question. So we basically, we, we identify the cycle, right? Um, we, we help the couple become aware that when one person brings escalated emotion to the other person because she's saying, oh, you burnt the toast, and he's going, you know, he would say, well, this is no big deal and, and might, might make her feel shame for making it a big deal, right? What we try to do is, is, is help the withdrawing member of the couple, often the male, to, to understand that underneath of this protest is a deeper injury related to having been ignored and not validated. So we try to help the withdrawing partner to say, wow, I, I see that that upsets you, I'm so sorry. 
and and basically to come toward the other person with compassionate emotion. And when when that happens, the the the, the argument de-escalates really quickly. And we practice it. So we do these things called enactments within emotionally focused therapy. So if if a couple kind of unpacks a conflict and the pursuer says, I was so hurt when this and this and this happened, then I'm going to move over to the withdrawing partner and I'm going to say, okay, so what were you feeling when your partner talked about her hurt? And then what I'm looking for is for him to show her that he's hurting, not just say the words, but through his facial expressions and his vocal tone to say, wow, you know, I felt really sad when you were saying how much you were hurting in this situation. And so then I want him to turn toward her and tell her how sad he felt. And what we're looking for there is two things. We're looking for his brain to get rewired as he in real time does what isn't habitual for him. He turns toward her emotion rather than away from it. And then we want her to have an experience of expressing hurt and having it heard. Now what that does for her is it heals her emotional memory. Now, Hurt emotional memory never gets erased. It only gets replaced. So I've had couples come to me in their 70s that have been hurt in their 30s, and the same hurt keeps coming up over and over again until the other partner that's, that's, that's hurt the one can, can say to that partner with real love and real compassion, I am so sorry that I hurt you and I care so much about you. What happens then is that the hurt partner has a different experience. She's feeling her hurt emotion, but she's getting a different response than she usually gets. She's used to being shut down and abandoned when she's feeling those emotions. But when she's expressing these hurts and she's getting compassion, um, the brain rewires that, that emotional memory and begins to um, replace it with this good experience that she's never had before while she's been in that kind of pain. And that begins to change the memory uh, of those emotions. So if somebody wants EFT training... Yeah. So the, the great thing about EFT, and I, I did a lot of training um, earlier in my career in individual therapy, and it was, you know, some in graduate school and conferences here and there, and you know, a little bit of supervision, but EFT is a pretty structured approach, and you start by going to what's called an externship, and it's an intensive four-day training process where you you watch live presentations of experienced therapists working with couples. And, um, and then you have the science and the theory unpacked. And then you begin seeing some of your own clients and getting some of your own supervision. And then you go through something called core skills, which is a deeper level of training. And that takes um, about a whole year of um, um, usually every other month um, trainings um, to, to learn another level of the, the therapy. And then you go to another level of supervision after that where you begin training for certification and you start recording your own sessions. And I must have recorded several hundred sessions. Oh my goodness. And then I would present them to my supervisor and then we would go over those sessions. This is wow. how you get good at EFT. You, you watch every nuance of, of what's happening and whether you as a therapist are attuning with the emotion of your, of your clients. And wow. um, it's, a, it's quite a training process, I tell you. Uh, and it's quite a vulnerable process as a therapist. Because <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I had already had uh, 25 years plus of, 
of experience, well, probably 20 when I started this. And um, so you think you know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> but when you get, <laughs> when you're there with your client and you're really looking at um, emotional attunement with a, with a seasoned um, EFT therapist, you're going, wow, I was spacing out here. I missed this cue. I didn't, and I, and I didn't help them turn toward the emotion. And I find that a lot of therapists, and I did this too, early in my career, they want to get cognitive with their, with their clients. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so it's real easy to talk yeah. about their thoughts, right. And to talk about, you know, um, all kinds of other things, right? Yeah, yeah. So training yourself out of some of those habits really um, is a bit of a challenge. Um, but eventually you, you learn how to stay in the emotion with them. And often, and this is part of the process, it's the vulnerable process of doing this work. Often I'm tearing up with my clients because um, I'm feeling it at that level. And... Um, and that moves them when I'm attuning at that level with them. Okay. All right. Before we close, any last words of wit and wisdom that you'd like to add on? Well, I just, you know, if for any couples that are watching, I would just say, look, there's always hope. You know, even if you think your relationship might be over, if you get the right kind of therapy that can get at these deeper hurts, um, we, we, we turn many of these relationships around. And, but I just, you know, I just encourage couples to get into a therapy that can help them more experientially talk to each other and more vulnerably talk to each other. Um, a lot of therapies just focus on communication absent of the emotion, and that's not enough. Um, you can have win-win conversations and still lose because you're not emotionally connected. Um, <clears throat> we wrote a book I'd like to just kind of hold up. It's called Emotional Connection, and it's on Amazon. And my wife and I, we, we created a – it's a kind of a fun read because we created a scenario of a successful couple named Ben and Claire – and we tell their story and how Ben had an emotional affair and how Claire got traumatized and melted down. And so we go from the story of Ben and Claire to my therapy office to the underlying science of, of attachment and EFT to give people a big picture of how this process works. So that's, that's available. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you for that. Okay. So we're going to say goodbye now to uh, Dr. Michael Regeer. I did say it right time. You said it right. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I thank you so very much for sharing your information with us. And um, to the audience out there, I just want to say thank you again for watching. And I look forward to you joining us again. Um, we're trying to do our best here to provide a format that will help, as I say, educate, enlighten, and perhaps demystify all things psychological. So, Please have a good life and uh, good mental health to you all. Mm -hmm.